If you've been searching for curriculum choices and resource ideas for your home educated year five child, then this is the video for you. I'm Jenny, mom to six and home educator to five. And in this video, I will be sharing with you resources, both online and textbooks, that we're currently using for my nine-year-old son who's in year five. I'll be covering everything that we're using for English, math, science, history and geography topics, as well as language and art. Many of these resources are tried and tested as I have used them with my older children successfully. Others I view as new improvements. Apart from being tried and tested, they're also very budget friendly and some are even free. So if you're super organized and planning for the new academic year, or maybe you're new to home education and looking for a few ideas of where to get started, stick around and hopefully you'll find something that will be of use to you and your child in your home school. So let me show you what we're using for English language and literature. We're using this curriculum from The Good and the Beautiful, which is an American company specifically made for the home educating family. That means they're made to be easy to use. They're open and go. There are 120 lessons, which translates to four lessons per week over a 30 week academic year. It covers literature, grammar, punctuation, art, geography, spelling, vocabulary, and writing. So that's really nice that it inc incorporates art and geography within the course. And obviously it saves time and leaves time for other things and all the benefits of homeschooling. But if you want to know more about the good and the beautiful and their background, I have a whole other video that covers their ethos and looks at different curricula that I've bought for my other children as well. So if you're interested in that, look at the video which I'll link up here and also in the description below. One other thing I really need to mention is that these are free to download on PDF from their website, which I will link in the description below. But again, I go into all of that in the video that's specifically all about the good and the beautiful. But let's take a look at how it all works. This is level four, don't forget that means year five UK at a glance. So feel free to pause the video at this point and you can have a detailed look at everything that's covered. As I said before, the subjects covered are reading literature, spelling, writing, punctuation, vocabulary, geography, art appreciation, art instruction, and grammar. This book also comes with spelling writing workshops and two readers, the level four personal reader. It's quite substantial and it's got different stories in there that the child is prompted to read and told what pages to read during different lessons as well as another reader. Where is that? This one, World Biographies. So you're also told what art supplies to get. It's pretty simple, just tracing paper or baking paper like I use. That works very well, this tracing paper. A set of chalk pastels. I got a really good set that the children have been very happy with. Um, it says at least 24 colors. I think it was about 12 to 14 pounds from Amazon and a dice. And I think the dice is used just for little spelling activities and things. As it says here, it connects multiple subjects, giving learning deeper meaning and interest. It eliminates the expense and trouble of purchasing and using six or seven different courses rather than just one to cover all these different subjects. It's also worth noting that The Good and the Beautiful is a Christian curriculum and emphasizes the good and the beautiful, God, family, nature, and high moral character. But it is very broadly Christian. It doesn't, it's not specific to any denomination and it just promotes broad Christian values. And there are many families who are not Christian at all that still use the good and the beautiful. It focuses on high quality, wholesome literature, emphasizes reading, creates excellent writers and editors. There is an answer key, which saves loads of time. You can get that on their website for free as well as a PDF. I don't, I haven't printed that out. I just have it on my phone or on an iPad and look it up there. And it incorporates a little bit of a parent student section, then half an hour of independent work at this stage, which is great. And 
than 20 minutes at least of personal reading. There are seven units in the course and each one starts with an overview. Spelling words are identified using a list of challenging spellings and then you identify the ones that they're not familiar with yet and those are the ones they study rather than just being given a list of words where they you know they may know some of them is just a waste of time you just identify the ones they don't know and then they work on those so to give you a bit of an idea of how each lesson works I mean we're like I said earlier we're halfway through the year already but here's a nice example so lesson four there's a bit of parent teacher work they have to read the introduction to Carlotta, which was the first story in this level four reader. And then they do their independent work and you can see how geography is incorporated then into the language lessons, which is great. Then there's a little bit of grammar, nouns and verbs, and then they're told to go to the spelling workshop in this book. And this book basically day by day they refer to do work and it alternates between spelling workshops where they work on different aspects of spelling then there they have these different activities to practice their actual specific spelling words that they've identified at the beginning beginning of each unit and then every other day they have a writing workshop so for instance here learning from the masters paragraph writing practice, um, rewriting in your own words, using sensory language, more another spelling workshop there, and then again practicing their specific spellings, different spelling rules, so that's that. And then I'll show you some of the nice art projects that they've had to do. So they teach them pastel techniques. Um, there's some learning about artists, various artists. There's a parent teacher work there where you had to read a poem. So yeah, this was one of their art projects, first art project was a drawing of a volcano and I think that was related to the study on Italy and Etna or Vesuvius, one of the, the volcanoes. One thing I'd like to point out here is obviously because it's American, there are some American spellings that I just point out. We have not found it a problem at all, but some people might not like it. So it's worth mentioning. It doesn't crop up that often and the children made aware that the Americans spell things differently to us. But in a way, it kind of makes them even more aware of the way we write them. And yeah, it's, it's not an issue at all for us. You got a bit more geography there about the climate zones. Here's another art project, and this is related to learning about the Netherlands. So that just gives you a little bit of an idea. That's the good and the beautiful. I think it's fantastic. I also supplement this with a comprehension book. This is a, a British company, Schofield and Sims, and he does a comprehension once a week. There's a text to read. There's various different types of text, so it could be for anything from autobiography, newspaper report, fiction, poems, persuasive writing, and I get him to do one of these per week. And then I've got the teacher's guide, which makes it really easy to mark and also provides some extension work, which is nice. So each one will have so an introduction and then the answers to the comprehension and then further activities, which is quite good. I will put links into their website. They also, if anyone's interested, they do resources for maths, English, science, as far as I know. Uh, and they're quite good, but this is all we're using this year because I'm quite happy that The Good and the Beautiful is covering everything I need for English. The other thing that we use that The Good and the Beautiful book suggests is a handwriting course, and this is just from CGP, which is again, another British company. They're great, and it's just copy work, basically. I like it because it helps him to improve his handwriting, but also just copying these different pieces of text helps him to learn about 
grammar and writing and sentence structure. So and there's all sorts of fun little texts for him to copy and just words as well. So that's that. And these are really affordable. Or 95. Well, these at Schofield and Sims are fairly affordable as well. They're not too bad. 4.95 again for the workbook. So I've got one of the iPads we use for the children to show you what we do for maths. We use White Rose Maths, which is an online educational resource. I actually found out about it years ago when my younger ones were still in primary school during the COVID lockdown times and the teachers would set the children's schoolwork from this website but when we did decide to withdraw my younger children from primary school we carried on using the white rose education and i found the fantastic facebook page called pop art home education where a home educating mum organizes group discounts for home educating parents and so we still use White Rose Education for Maths at an unbelievable price. So if you're not already a member of the Pop Art Home Education group on Facebook, it is well worth joining because you can get some unbelievable discounts. Let's just go into it and I'll show you how it works. Basically, you find the year. There's year five. This is the third version, which is the most up to date and we are already in spring term. So what is great about this is that it sets out each of the three terms, autumn, spring, and summer. And it tells you when you should be doing each topic as well as how long it should take. Now, obviously, if you don't run your school year along the school system years, you can still follow the weeks, which is nice. And it just gives you an idea. You don't have to do it within a year either but it's just nice to give you an idea of how long it should take. And if you do like to follow the school year, which we do, it works really well for us. So he's just finished decimals and percentages. And so as you can see, it, it sets out the scheme of learning, some different problem solving questions to begin with if you want. Here's an end of block assessment. And what's nice is there's a second block assessment at the end. So some people choose to do a block assessment at the beginning to see where their child is at and what work what they need to work on and then they'll do the second one at the end of the course or you can save them both for the end and so they can do one you can pick up their weaknesses and then you can do the second one once you've covered those which is the way I like to use it most of the time each each of these is a different day there's a video so for instance decimals up to two places you would play the video link and there's the video so this video is 10 minutes and 39 seconds. So then they're about that length. That's roughly the average length. And then your child can watch the video. Here are today's get ready questions. Pause the video and have a go. Press play when you are ready to go through the answers together. So what would each square be worth? Let's think about this. Well, if the frame is worth one whole, then that would mean that each square is worth 0 0.1 or one tenth. So that gives you an idea of the kind of thing you get. I'll just quickly run through it. So as you can see, it then will direct the child to go onto their worksheet. And that worksheet is found here. So work sheet right on so there's lots of different tabs here if you want to download i think that's the powerpoint no that's just some more background guidance about that particular lesson and i have to be honest i don't often use that and i would only use that if they need extra help but the videos are pretty self-explanatory then these are just powerpoints and teaching slides of the same video uh, because this is obviously made for school teachers as well. There's some true or false questions if you want to give your child anything extra. There's the PowerPoint again in a different format, I think. That's the worksheet display. So each day I will bring this up before I get my son to do the video. And then I'll just come on here 
and print it and it Bluetooths to our printer and it, he just prints it off and he can actually do it himself now prints off his his worksheet and then does his video and then at the end I can mark it for him and there's all the answers to the sheet which is really helpful or I'll get him to mark it so that's basically how it works this is his folder and as you can see so this is all his various sheets from throughout the year I think actually I've even archived some of them it's a sheet a day it's nothing too onerous but we find it's really good to just get him to watch the video do the worksheet I'll then mark it or he'll mark it and then we'll go over anything that he's having trouble with and then we might find some extra questions if he needs extra practice and I've got this book that I got as a, an absolute bargain at the beginning of the year but it's quite good because it's practice book for year five it was two pounds I think the regular price is 7.99 and I think it was two pounds because they've updated this to a newer edition but this is fantastic so if he was to need any extra practice I would just go up uh, and find the relevant section please excuse my noisy dishwasher if you can hear it gurgling away in the background but I would just find the section decimals and percentages so page 68 and then find something to help him get a little bit more practice on whatever it was that he was working on because this is quite good it covers the national curriculum and uh, white rose maths does follow the national curriculum as well the other thing that i use to help my son with maths is this book that i found on amazon because he just needs to get a bit quicker with his times tables and this is great it's 100 pages of timed tests answer key included multiple digits zero to twelve fast and simple and the idea is that he does it every day but we try and do it a few times a week and he times himself and it goes through all the times tables over and over again in different combinations and he's meant to score himself and time himself each time and see how he improves if you want times table help that's a recommendation um, just yeah practice makes perfect other people use something called times table rock stars which is an online app that lots of people like we had it for a while but I found that my kids just spent most of their time doing the easy times tables not working on the harder ones so they could build up coins to buy things for their avatar and that's all fun and great but it didn't really help them learn the more tricky times tables where for us I think this is bit more successful at achieving that so for science we also use an online platform and it's these science video courses I got a fantastic discount for these courses through the pop art home education group again although he's very affordable anyway as you can see it's a one-time purchase and then you have a lifetime subscription so it's a science interactive video series it covers again the national curriculum at key stage two all the different topics you are instructed to buy the key stage 2 science study book from CGP this one which we have as well as the workbooks that go with that particular year so KS2 science workout plant life and then there's various for all the different topics that are covered so there is a set of four for year five that you need to buy so that's what we're using and you can click on there and find all the books to purchase you can there's a bundle you can get there from uh, CGP or I think I bought them from Amazon and they're pretty affordable these workout books so my son is currently on life cycles and reproduction and these books like I say are pretty affordable three pound fifty for each workbook so that's not too bad for a year's worth of science that's the study book and that's 5.95 and it just goes through everything and so what happens with this course once you logged in you will go to your lessons and we're doing year five and 
up over here you get all the PowerPoints actually to the videos if you want to go over them later on. I've never found a need for that. And you find the schemes of work, which I do print out just so I can have them in advance. And it goes through all the schemes of work for the different topics for year five. So for instance, if you want to download that one, just to give you an idea. So it would say here, the year five topic, living things and their habitats. And then he tells you what the lesson is, pollination and fertilization, describe the life processes of reproduction in some plants and animals, pollination and fertilization, CGP study book, page six. So you would go on to here and then I'd We'd go through this together or I'd tell him to read it himself. He's old enough to do that himself, but we might have a bit of a chat about it. And that's the workout book. So pages three to nine. And then I would tell him is that three to nine. Yeah, he would have to do the pages about reproduction in plants and just work through them. One other nice thing about these uh, CGP workout books is that they will outline little experiments that you can do at home, simple things with uh, materials that you can get from around the home. Now you have your cuttings, you can plant them, read instructions carefully and then follow them for each of your cuttings and then it's like a, a little project where they can study what happens. So I'll give you an idea what the videos are like now. If he was doing the pollination and fertilization, you just go into it like that. Please excuse the reflection of the lights. Hello and welcome to this video. And in this video, we're looking at the topic of pollination and fertilization. So let's have a look, shall we, at the learning objectives. Okay, so objectives are describe the life process of reproduction some plants ignore the animal bits we're not doing animals in this video right so just to give you an idea i'll just do, sort of run through and you can sort of get an idea of how they are they're nice and colorful he's a head teacher of a school uh, i think he's actually a secondary school teacher and he's got a really nice relaxed manner explains everything really clearly he's made all these powerpoints for each topic to cover the national curriculum and you can pick and choose what you'd like your child to do or just go through all of them whatever suits and then at the end there's always a quiz that the, my son Three likes to do we go at? see what we got what do we call the male part of the flower now if you remember how i said to remember it this would be easy what's the male part is it stamen the petal or the carpal a b all right, so that gives you an idea of that. And it's a six minute video. So again, it's just really nice and straightforward. And then after watching the video, as I said, uh, my son will just recap in the study book and then do a few questions in the workout book, which like I say, I think works really well for us. So all these lessons are designed by a science teacher named Graham Bray. He is very, very accessible as well. So if you ever have any questions about the course, I've found that I, I've had to email him a few times and he always replies within 24 hours, which is fantastic. He's very helpful. Thoroughly recommend this course. It just makes life really easy and straightforward. For history, we have been using this story of the world, history for the classical child. And this is, an American curriculum from the well-trained mind and they are fantastic it actually begins with this one which is volume one ancient times and it is aimed at the primary child so my older daughter was still in year six my son was in year four and we went through all of the ancient times we absolutely loved it the stories are told in such a just an interesting and engaging way and they would ask me mom can we please do history um even when you know when we were doing other work they'd, they'd basically they'd be asking me to do it because it was just so fascinating 
Um, so that was last year, but we're onto this one with him now. So onto the Middle Ages, and there are two more volumes, obviously all the way up to today. And this is from the fall of Rome to the rise of the Renaissance. It's just super engaging. And where, whatever we're learning about, we'll then get out the atlas and find out where that is. So it's a bit of geography as well. And the cool thing is it also comes with an activity book. For, so for each chapter then, you'll have a section with cross-references, um, different review questions, narration exercise, so Charlotte Mason type work, more review questions, um, additional history reading suggestions, corresponding literature suggestions. So you could use this book as one as your sort of learning spine, so to speak, and then do so much from just this curriculum if you wanted to. Um, and then it goes on to some map work. And uh, there's always, there's a section with maps at the back that you can print out. There's loads of printouts you can photocopy and then work on. And then there's projects. So here, make a moth mix, whatever that's obviously relevant to. Oh, this was a section on Australia, the bottom of the world. Uh, make a boomerang, become a Maori warrior. So different activities. Some of them might be a bit young be a child or but I think there are things here to suit various ages and key stage two and my son has enjoyed that so that's for each chapter but here are the maps so each section will tell you what page to go to so sort of to print out the map and then you'll do the wet map work that is set out for that activity so as, as I said before it's a little bit of geography sometimes there's a coloring in for the younger children uh, games, various different activities to go with whatever you're studying, but it's quite good. It's so it's all the all the printouts that you can want, different Greek columns there. So I I really really like this curriculum. As I said, it's called the Story of the World. History for the Classical Child by Susan Wise Bauer. Uh, she is a, an advocate for a classical education. One of the books I read when I first got into home education was her Well Trained Mind book. And I got lots of ideas from there, although I, I'm just taking what suits us. And this is definitely something that we've, we've kept from those days as it's just so good. Thoroughly recommend it. I know that many homeschoolers use it. I will put the information on this in the description below anyway, if you want to look into her and find out more about these books. But you can get them from Amazon, as I said, and I think I got mine as very good used. So you can get them at a discounted price, a lot of them. People use them and sell them on, on eBay as well. And they don't have to necessarily come from America either. You're able to get them on Amazon from the UK quite often. For languages, we've used these books, just got them from the works, I think, but you can get them from WH Smith's or uh, Waterstones, Amazon Online, and he's pretty much got through this now, and he's gone on to using the Key Stage 2 curriculum on Oak Education, which I'll go on to, but these are quite fun. My stickers at the beginning it's well used as you can see but it covers all the basics Spanish basics Just a bit of a read through and then there's this is an extra ten minutes a day Spanish so we've done that but as I said we are now using Oak National Academy for Spanish and you can just go straight into there. Again, I will put links to this. It's free. It came about during the COVID times and lots of home educated children use these. I, I see a lot of people on the Facebook forums mention this. So you can go to Key Stage 2 there, for instance. And this might be something you want to investigate for lots of different subjects. 
as you can see, lots of things are covered here, but we use it for Spanish. And then, so that's the key stage two Spanish units. It goes through a whole load of different units and a few lessons each. They're video courses. So for instance, introducing and describing yourself, start the lesson, there's a little quiz. Um, if I, I'll just skip that and then you can see there's a video. Hola chicos y bienvenidos a nuestra clase de español. Hello everyone and welcome to our Spanish lesson today. My name is Señorita Harrison. So these are really nice. My son will just do one of these a week or a couple of these a week, just depending. And I'll just do a quick run through. But she's really lovely. There are different teachers. I think there's a couple of teachers that do it because my older daughter did this whole course as well. And she's now moved on to the Key Stage 3 Oak Academy Spanish, which is also fantastic. And then she gives a few little tasks as well and gives the answers. So thoroughly recommend that for Spanish or you might want to investigate it for any other subjects. Go on the Facebook forums if you want to get some rec recommendations. It's always good to do. Ask other parents who've used it and see what they think. Or take a look yourself. But they're completely free, these uh, lessons. It is a brilliant resource. The other subject or the other language that we like to do, if anyone's interested, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but I find Latin fascinating. I'm really enthusiastic about it. The fact that so many of our words come from Latin, the fact that it relates to words in medicine and botany and science and uh, just so many of the words in English, you can learn so much about grammar through learning Latin. And this is a lovely book, it's called Minimus. It's based around this little mouse that lives with a family who live in Roman Britain. I think it's an Oxford, no, Cambridge publication. And it's just a really fun book. We do Latin once a week and we just read through the little comics. We learn loads about the Romans and how they lived. And what's also really fantastic is that there is a website that's been created by some teachers with some completely free resources, the Minimus Workbook. And so each chapter we do, then my son will do a couple of pages. It's basically a couple of pages per chapter. And we've been through quite a lot of these already, but you get the idea. But these are really fun. It's, it's not boring at all. It's not sort of boring Latin, just repeating conjugations or anything like that. Um, uh, they get, goes into Greek mythology that of course became part of Roman culture. It relates it to the Romans when they settled in Britain and this family is supposed to be living in Vindolanda which is a real place south of the Hadrian's Wall. You can go and see the ruins of this old Roman fort and it talks about different artifacts that have been found, all sorts. But it's Quite a neat little book it's not very long just passed halfway through the year now and we've just finished chapter eight and it's ten chapters and they really enjoy it we all do this together with my son and daughter and the little one sits in i just think it's really interesting and adds depth to a lot of other subjects having knowledge of, of latin and this background Anyway, that's me advocating for Latin. I, I love it. I love the subject. Finally, let me tell you about the Two Pound Tuition Hub. My son is doing two live classes with the Two Pound Tuition Hub. And as the title suggests, it is very, very affordable. This is their website. My son is doing the Bible stories on a Monday with this lovely teacher, Gemma. It's Bible stories and craft for five to 11 year olds and it's once a week for an hour and he really enjoys it she makes it very interesting there are always fun activities to go with the lesson to make them more engaging my older daughter who is in year seven actually takes her 
class for older children, which is later on that day at 3 o'clock. That's the Bible History 11 Plus with Gemma. And the other little class that Gemma does is a drawing from 8 Plus with Gemma on Tuesday mornings. And that's a little bit of art that they really enjoy doing. Again, it's one hour once a week and my son, my daughter, who is in year seven, and then my littlest, who's five and in reception age, does the drawing class with Gemma also. Um, so that's a two pound tuition hub. If you're interested, that's their timetable. Do feel free to pause the video at this point and then you can have a good look at what's on offer. So the lessons are two pounds per session for a five week block, it works out at £10 per half term for five lessons and that's for the whole family. I will put the link to the website in the description below if you want to find out more. If you've got any questions about any of the resources that I've shared today, please put them in the comments below and I will endeavour to answer any questions. I also love it when other home educators jump in and share their ideas and tips too because we can all learn so much from each other. If you like this video please give it a like, share it with those who you think may benefit and make sure to subscribe so that you can find out whenever I post any new videos. Thank you so much for joining me and don't forget yes you can home educate. Bye bye!